Okay, hello. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of your fourth quarter learning goals. So the first one we're going to talk about is, we'll just read these I can statements. I can determine central idea of a text and how it is conveyed through particular details. I can determine an author's point of view or purpose in a text and how it is conveyed through details. So the difference between these two would be central idea of a text and this one would be author's point of view or purpose. And the last one, I can compare and contrast one author's presentation of events with that of another. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some notes that you should have picked up from me by now. And what you're going to do is you're going to glue these notes on pages 92 and 93. Now, yes, it's one piece of paper, but this is how you're going to glue this. So give me a second here and click over to my smart, my stock camera. So what you're going to do is you're going to take it and right here where that paper said, right after it says, how do I determine the author's purpose of text in a text? You're going to cut that off right there. And you're going to glue that on page 92 in your notebook. And you're going to glue it just like this. Make sure you have enough room over here where you can write. And then on the other side, you're going to page 93. You're just going to glue it just like that in your notebook. Okay? So go ahead and pause the video and have that done while before you continue on with the rest of us, you'll be ready. Okay, so now that you should have that glued in, let's go ahead and talk about some of this information. So at the top of your page of 92, go ahead and write author's purpose because that's what these notes are gonna be about. It's basically, what is author's purpose and then how do we go about determining what that author's purpose is? So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna use some colored pencils like you know I like and you're welcome to do the same with colored pencils or however you want, okay? Let's take a look at this first part of it. So when you're looking at author's purpose, why did the author write this piece? That's what we want to look at. The question is, why did the author write this piece? Okay, that's what we're looking at. The, answer, the question is why? So let's take a look at what the definition says. Often, more than one of these purposes will be seen at any given point in a piece. To determine the overall purpose, you need to read the whole piece and think about what major idea the author would like for the reader to take away from reading. So the important part in here that we want to look at is that we're looking for the overall purpose, so the entire text, what the overall purpose the author had with it, and we want to think about the major idea. What is the major idea of the entire piece of text that the author is trying to convey to us? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the different um, types of pieces that an author can write to uh, portray his purpose in the text. The first one we're looking at here is called um, Inform. So let me grab my highlighter, hold on. Oops, wrong one. Okay, so the first one that we have is Inform. So we have Inform, we're gonna talk about Argue, Entertain, and Reflect. Those are the four main pieces that we're gonna talk about. So let's talk about Inform. First of all, it says it's unbiased, no obvious side. So go ahead and circle the un in here because if it's unbiased, um, it's there's no there's no side that's being taken. So if you remember, bias means that the if you're biased towards something. So maybe you're biased toward baseball over soccer. Let's say if you're going to compare two sports and you're a baseball player, you're biased probably to um, baseball. Okay. So if it's an informative, if the author's purpose is to inform you as a reader, then there's not going to be any bias in that. It's also fact-based. That means it's going to include the research. It's going to have some facts in there for you to read about to um, help you get informed about it. And there's two sides that are given. But the two sides that are given, there can be anyway. It doesn't have to be. But if there are two sides that are given, the most important factor of this is that it's an equal balance, meaning that there isn't a bias towards one or the other, okay? So it also has multiple perspectives. So it's gonna take into account the different types of perspectives. So maybe it's going to look, if you're writing, let's say, one I used in class was, let's say that you're talking about Nike shoes versus Under Armour shoes. Well, if it's an informative piece, it's going to tell you the, the pros and cons basically about each shoe without any bias, However, it also might tell you, like from a from a football, if a football player, these are the advantages. From a basketball player, these are the advantages. So there's different perspectives that are shown. OK, 
okay? But again, no bias, remember that. All right, looking at the next one, it's an argue. So the, the purpose of the author might be to argue something. I also like to say persuade. So if you would put persuade here to help you remember. Now, you guys talked about this in your third quarter class with Mr. Jolliffe, and you, you wrote some argumentative pieces. So think about this as you're trying to persuade somebody something, to, to believe in something or choose a side. So here it says it's bias. So it's not unbiased. This is bias. An argument to persuade someone is that you're biased. You're going to take a side. Going back to that article about Under Armour and Nike, let's say that you prefer Under Armour. Well, you're going to persuade your reader as to why Under Armour is better than Nike, if that's what you're writing about. Again, you're providing facts. You want to give some facts to back up your statement. Now, you may try to convince someone, again, about that Under Armour being better. And that if, if there are two sides given, you only one is correct. So that's the difference, if you think about it, between inform and argue. And inform, for the author's purposes, to inform it, while it's unbiased, there's no side chosen, you're giving the fact. And if it's an argument, you want to persuade someone, there's going to be one side, and you're also going to, um, there's only going to be one side that's, um, one side that you're trying to persuade them to. The next one we're talking about is entertain. As narr narr narrate but entertain it tells a story with the beginning middle and end and it has a conflict so you know this as whenever you're writing a fiction story right you read fiction so that would be a, the pur author's purpose would be to entertain you so most of those books that you're reading are for entertainment purposes and then the last one we want to talk about right now is reflect it says an example is a diary so if I want to think about, if I want to go home and think about my day and I want to write a piece about how my day went, what went well, what I could have done better, what I hoped for, things like that, that's going to be a reflect. I'm going to be, my purpose of writing is to reflect on my day. And so it says here, a person speaking of his or her experience, often thinking, what would I do next time or I wish, okay? So a popular type of reflect to, for a purpose to reflect is like an autobiography. So go ahead and write autobiography. Now you know what a biography is, right? Biography is when somebody writes about someone. So an autobiography, if you look at the word auto in front of that, that just means that I'm writing, um, I'm writing a piece about myself. So whoever's writing it is writing about themselves. That's the difference. That's what an autobiography is. So if I'm if a person is, if an author is writing to reflect then they're reflecting on something that they have seen, done, or whatever. Okay, so there are your four choices here. Inform, argue, entertain, and reflect. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and go over here to the side of your paper where it should be written P-I-E-R. Okay, now we talked about this in one of our previous lessons. I just want to kind of do this. And if you remember, when we used an example, we talked about the three big questions that readers ask when they read. We talked about that there are acronyms, right? So we, this is called an acronym. So go ahead and write acronym, A-C-R-O-N-Y-M, acronym. And it's letters that stand for something, okay? So peer, so if we have over here peer, um, it's not this kind of peer. I talked about this in class also. So it's not like, let's say that you have P-E-E-R would be your classmate, another person in your class. That's a peer. We're talking about P-I-E-R. So what is, if you think about what is a peer, I want you to get a visual of this in your head. So if you think about, like I did this, um, let's just Google P-I-E-R. A little bit slow here. Come on, P-I-E-R. Did it go? Here we go. If we do that and we go to images, then we can see that a pier is a good example. A pier is an extension that goes out onto the ocean, so from the from the um, beach or port or whatever. So this would be like a pier. Usually these are underneath. That's kind of not the best example to use right there. But Navy Pier is one that's really big. It looks similar to that. So again, it's a pier. So think about this whenever you're thinking about the word that we're using is it's extending out over the ocean, okay? This will give you kind of an idea of how you can remember this. So that's a peer. Now what we're going to think about is the different types of author's purpose. Well, the first one we talked about was persuade. 
So I'm going to write P-E-R-S-U-A-D-E. -E. The I is going to come for inform, I-N-F-O-R-M. The E is going to come for entertain, E-N-T-E-R-T-A-I-N. -E and the R is for reflect. So that's a way that you can remember all the different types of ways that the author can persuade the reader. Persuade, I'm sorry, not persuade, the purpose is for an author to write. Persuade, inform, entertain, and reflect. All right, let's go ahead and skip over. So the question here in your notes says, how do I determine the author's purpose in a text? So great, I now know that these are the types, but how do I determine which type of writing, what the author's purpose is? So this is what we want you to do. So on the other side of your page, let me do some moving around here to get my book underneath here. All right, perfect, right there. So on the other side of your page, you have, it says here, ask yourself. So you have to ask yourself some questions to determine what the author's purpose is. So let's talk about these. This one here says, what is the author's point of view? Well, point of view, that's the key word that we want to remember, point of view. We have to determine the author's point of view. How do we do that? Well, let's read on. It says author's opinion or bias about the topic. So now this is important because we want it, there's a bias in here. What's his point of view? What's the bias? It's an opinion, right? So again, it might be that my point of view is that maybe I work at an Under Armour store and that's why I think that Under Armour shoes are better than Nike. So it says, what does he or she want? Why well, want the um, I want people to think that Under Armour shoes are better. Like, dislike, agree, or disagree. So that's the first thing. Then it says, look for what author is bringing to the table. All right, bringing to the table. Does that mean that they're literally bringing something to the table? Physically, they pick up something, bring it to the table? No. Remember we talked about figurative language before? So what type of figurative language is bringing to the table? What is that, just, what kind of figurative language? Well, if you said idiom, you're correct. That would be an idiom. So it's what type, what, what, look for what the author is bringing to the table, meaning what in his or her background may influence his or her tone on this specific topic. For instance, let's think about Mrs. Goff. So if she teaches science, right, and she's going to write an article about um, being a sixth grade science teacher, well, what she's bringing to the table is all of her years of experience as being a sixth grade science teacher. So her point of view is she's bringing her viewpoint, her perspective from being a science teacher over the years, what she has learned, okay? So here's the clues. It says, job, who is sponsoring or publishing the writing. Connotation of the language. Are they using positive language, negative language? Um, the different ethnic, family, or religious background, and even the city from where the person is from, okay? So that's the point of view. That's going to matter when you're trying to determine the author's point of view. All right, so that's number one. That's one thing that we're going to look for as a reader. The second thing we're going to look for are writing strategies. So go ahead and put a box around writing strategies. So in your writing strategies, it says what writing strategies did he or she use? Well, you guys know this. You may not think you do, but you do. Look at it from this perspective. So text structures. Well, you've talked about text structures before, right? You talked about those in Mr. Jolliffe's class. You talked about the different writing types, cause and effect, problem solution, compare and contrast, description, or sequencing, right? Those are the different types of text structures that you talked about and you practiced with in ELA. That's one thing you want to look at for writing strategies. Another thing you want to look at is the text features. What text features are used? So charts, graphs, pictures, title, captions, diagrams, that's going to help you determine the writing strategy of the, of the author. So the next thing you want to look at is the style. So text features underlined, text structures. So this one is the style of the writing and information given. So in other words, when you're thinking about the author's writing strategies, then did they use questions? Did they use different connotative language, anecdotes, poetry, essays, opinion? Is it an opinion piece in a newspaper? Is it type of statistics or data presented? What type of data did they provide you. In other words, if they're telling you about Under Armour versus Nike again, if we go back to that example, are they telling you information of um, how long Nike or Under Armour's been around? That'll help you. To, that is that. Are they trying to prove that information by providing that with, to you? 
Um, it also says absolute language, vocabulary, or tone. I'll go that word tone. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But that is something that you want to think about too when you're looking at writing strategies. Okay. So again, the different types of author's purpose for us to determine the author's purpose of the piece of text, we have to think about the point of view and we have to think about the writing strategies. The third thing we want to look at as a reader is we want to look at the mood. What is the mood or the tone of the piece? So what is the mood or the tone of the writing piece that we're reading? So let's take a look at what that means. Mood is the emotion evoked in the reader. That means that when a reader reads something, what emotion do they get? Um, so like think about, um, somebody asked me in class, well, what does the word evoke mean? I don't get it. Well, think about it this way. Let's say my husband brings me home a, a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Well, what em I, and I would say that those flowers evoked emotions in me. They made, they caused, they created, I expressed emotions of being thankful. Maybe I cried because I was surprised, whatever. So that's what that means by um, an emotion evoked in the reader. So think about mood. I want you to remember that it's about the reader. That's important. It's the emotion that the reader gets from reading the text. So these are just examples right here of all the different emotions. And of course, there's many more, but this will give you an example when you're working on your um, author's purpose. The next one we want to talk about is tone. And this is the author's attitude about the topic. How does he or she communicate his or her point of view? So think about author's attitude. This is what the big one is. So think about, I'm sure you've heard from um, your parents, your guardian about, um, you need to change your tone with me. Maybe you asked if they would take you someplace over the weekend and to meet someone and you were like, you need to take me here. Well, is your tone right? No, you need to check your tone, right? Well, it's the way that you delivered the message. So think about this part from authors to determine the author's purpose. How was that message delivered to you? So tone is about the author's attitude. Like how did that come across in their writing? So thinking about um, there's different types here. Was it direct? Was it funny, humorous? Was it uh, appreciative, harsh, excited? Was it, and this one right here we talk about call to action. What does call to action mean? Well, that means that when you read something, did it ask, did, did it make you want to do something as far as like, let's say you were writing about um, how we need to um, not throw recycling away or something. Did, did, it, did that piece in there, did it say that you should, you know, keep a, keep a bucket here, turn it in, or call on your friends, spread the word. If it says like spread the word about making sure that we're recycling, that's a call to action. It's having you, after you read this, it's wanting you to do something. So it's encouraging that. That's a call to action, okay? All right, so these are the different ways of things that we need to look at when we are determining the author's purpose. So come back over to this page here. And what I want you to do is I want you to write right down here Um, how do we determine the author's purpose in a piece of text? Okay. So how do we determine the author's purpose in a piece of text? There are three things that we want to look at. All right, we just went over them, so you should already know them and be able to fill it in. But let's talk about them to make sure. To determine, how do we determine the author's purpose in a piece of text? Well, we want to look at the point of view, right? We just talked about that. It's important that we look at the point of view. It's important that we look at the author's writing strategies. And it's also important that we consider the mood and tone in the piece, okay? So thinking about those three things. All right, so these are your notes that for, that for basically all the terms, all of the, the skills that we're gonna be practicing throughout this quarter. Now, what I wanna to introduce to you now is you should have a piece of paper that looks like this. And this is our Q4 skills practice. Looks kind of similar to the one we did for Q3, but I've changed it up with 
so that it will fit for this quarter. So of course the first thing you want to do is put your first and last name on there and your block. Okay, very important. First name, last name, block. Because you are going to come back to this in the next class lesson. So if you remember, if you were here when we went to, we had life ed the other day, I asked you to read two articles in our scholastic scope. The first issue I asked, the first article I asked you to read was this one. And it's called The Problem of Plastic. Okay, so all you're going to do up here is you're going to write the title, The Problem of Plastic. Okay, that's the article. The author, now in this particular um, article, I did not find any type of author. So that's okay, it's in Classic Scope. We're just going to write Scope. It's in April it's issue of 2019. And we're talking about pages 12 through 13. Okay. The other article that I had you read in class was, Can We Save Our Planet from Plastic? Same thing. I didn't see an author. So now we're going to write that one on article. So this was article number one. Now we're going to look at article number two. So we have, Can We Save our planet from plastic. Okay, who's the author on that? We don't know again, so we're going to write scope April 2019 pages. This is third, I'm sorry, this is pages 14 through 15. Okay, pages 14 through 15. Now, on this sample page, what I want you to do is I want you just to, these lines here, just for my demonstration purposes, I want you to just color these in a little bit darker here, all the way down your page. Because my goal right now is to explain to you how we're going to use this template throughout the quarter. So just darken that line all the way down. Then turn it over and do the same thing on the back here. Like so. All right, now the reason why I had you do that is because there are basically two questions that we want to ask. That there's two parts to this form. Okay, the first question is, how are the texts different? Okay, so we got to talk about how they're different. So we're basically going to compare these two pieces of text. So the problem of plastic, I'm going to do that only on this side. So author's purpose. Here's point of view, and note, it gives us a little hint underneath. So author's purpose, was it to persuade, argue, inform, entertain, and about what? It's not just the author's purpose was to entertain the reader. What about? You got to keep going further. What was the author entertaining the reader about? Okay. And then there's point of view. If you skip over at the same side, there's our author's tone and our writing strategies used. Okay. So this is all about one article. Now the next side, We'd said, can we save our planet from plastic? It's the same thing. There's your author's purpose, point of view. So it's going down as well. And on this side, tone and writing strategies. Okay. So if you wanted, when you're doing that, you could even like fold your paper in half if you wanted to and think, okay, so I'm just working on this half of my paper. Okay. So you're looking at, this is how we're going to compare text. So you're doing all of that. Then the next question it says to you is, how are these two texts alike? So we're thinking about how they are alike. Now notice it says two examples, okay? So you are going to do one and two. What are they alike? You're probably familiar with this, right, as a Venn diagram, right? So you're talking about how are they alike, and then these are the two ways of how they're different, Article 1 and Article 2, okay? So my purpose in this was just to show you how we're going to use this template. So the next time you come to class, you're going to bring this template back and we're going to work on one side of it for one article. Then you'll work with the partner on the second side, on the second article. Okay. So if you have any questions about these notes or need any further explanation, always feel free to come give me, come talk to me and I'd be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.
as I'm trying to get this to stop. 